We're live. Cloud is going. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask that everyone please turn their cell phones to vibrate and all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of October 29th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumble, and I'd like to thank you for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Less than present. Borelli. Present. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Carnegie. <clears throat> Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Present. Prudentchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Present. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Menchaca. Present. Miller. Moya. Present. Perkins. Correcti. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present. Below. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Anthony Sandusky, the spiritual leader at Village Life in Manhattan. Shall we pray? Mm -hmm. Creator and sustainer, we thank thee for the marvelous gift of this day. We thank thee for the gift of each person present who is committed to the public service of thy people. I ask, O Holy One, that you would create in us a pure heart, renew within us a right spirit, a spirit of service for the greater good of our communities. 
Allow this council to be committed towards seeking your justice and your compassion in this great city. We beseech you, O Emmanuel, to be in the midst of the discussions and deliberations that will take place this afternoon among this city council. Allow this council's work to be for the sake of abundant life for all your people. Allow work from this council to be for the sake of embodying a limitless love that knows no bounds. Allow work from this council to be for the sake of building the beloved community right here in the city of New York. We ask these things in your name and in your name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful and timely prayer. I'd now at this time like to ask council member Mark Levine to spread the invocation onto the record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The Reverend Anthony J. Sandusky, who I'm pleased is a resident of the 7th Council District in Northern Manhattan, is an educator, social entrepreneur, and motivational speaker. Reverend Sandusky is the founder and executive director of Village Life Foundation, a groundbreaking nonprofit whose mission is to put an end to mass incarceration and reduce recidivism rates in Black and Latinx communities by providing a holistic reentry program and an innovative alternative to incarceration for transition age youth. Reverend Sandusky is the former pastoral resident of the Concord Baptist Church of Christ in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. He currently teaches courses in the Religious Studies Department at Iona College in New Rochelle and the Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies at Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. His research engages issues of race, religion, and culture and Southern, in Southern and urban communities. Reverend Sandusky is a graduate of the American Baptist College in Nashville, Tennessee, where he earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in Biblical Theology, a graduate of Vanderbilt University, where he earned his Master of Divinity degree with a certificate in Black Church Studies, and a graduate of Yale University, where he earned his Master of Arts degree in Ethics. Additionally, Reverend Sandusky has studied the papers of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on the campus of Stanford University, and we are truly honored that he was able to offer our invocation today. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Levine. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Keith Powers. Thank you. I make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of October 5th, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. N257, Board of Elections appointment. Rules, privileges, and elections. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M258, Queen Sanitation Garage 1. Thank you. At this time, I'm asking for a, the clerk to take a roll call vote on today's <laughs> land use call-up. This is just a vote on the single land use call-up. Adams. Good eye. And Priest Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. I vote aye. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. I vote aye. Thank you. <coughs> Bush. I vote aye. Diaz. B. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. I vote aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. I vote aye. 
<clears throat> Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowit. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Mizell. <laughs> Council member Mizell. Yes. Thank you. Then Shaka. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups have 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstention. Thank you. Today's land use call-up is adopted. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Happy Thursday. As always, I hope that everyone is safe and that you and your families are safe as well. I wanna begin by acknowledging an important and somber anniversary for our city. Eight years ago, our city was devastated by the impact of Superstorm Sandy. We lost 43 of our fellow New Yorkers during that terrible storm and we will never forget them. As we remember those we have lost, we must recommit ourselves to do all we can to help our waterfront communities that are still struggling to recover and we, we must do more to protect them from future hurricanes and extreme weather. Climate change is real, it's not going away. And we have a bill today that helps in the global fight against climate change. And I look forward to working with my colleagues on other ways to tackle this important issue. Before we dive into legislation, I wanna acknowledge the death of Cecil Corbin Mark. He was instrumental in the council's climate agenda Cecil was always making sure environmental justice was top of mind in our work together. He left behind an incredible legacy and our hearts go out to his loved ones. I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge the lives that we have lost to COVID-19. 23,980 New Yorkers have succumbed to the impact of the virus as of yesterday. This is always such a devastating number to think about and a tremendous loss for our entire city. This week, the United States reported a record of more than half a million COVID-19 cases. States across the country are experiencing a massive surge in cases, and it is a painful reminder of how important it is to remain vigilant. 
The virus is far from over. It will not magically disappear. It is not a hoax. And though many of us may have coronavirus fatigue, that's a natural thing, but it is not an excuse to stop wearing a mask or to stop socially distancing. Together, we can save lives and we must do everything we can to stop the spread of this devastating virus. I'd like for us to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the lives of those that we lost to COVID-19 and to the passing of Cecil Corbin Mark. Thank you. Today, October 29th, is Latina Equal Protection Day, which is the day this year that Latinx women finally catch up to what the average white man has earned in 2019. Let that sink in. It's almost November of 2020, and Latina women are just catching up. Overall, women earn 82 cents for a man's dollar but that pay disparity impacts black and Latina women the hardest. Latina women earn 55 cents for every dollar earned by white non-Hispanic men. Black women earn 62 cents for every dollar. We need to do better and that starts here in New York City. The council today released a preliminary analysis of the city's payroll data that shows troubling pay discre discrepancies among gender and race in our public workforce. We are also getting access to more data and we'll do a deeper analysis in the coming months. This is the beginning of a long-term effort to seriously address these disparities once and for all. We have this data thanks to Local Law 18, which was sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and Council Member Danique Miller, which passed in 2018. This law requires the administration to annually issue payroll data. It forces us to lift the screen on pay discrepancies in our city. We can't truly address this inequity without regularly examining the numbers and releasing them publicly. And I wanna thank Majority Leader Cumbo and Councilor Miller for their leadership on this issue. I also wanna thank CWA Local 1180, who is a fight for equal pay for their members, largely women, and people of color, women of color, inspired this legislation from a lawsuit they filed. Special thanks to CWA President Gloria Middleton, who is helping us continue this fight for all city workers, not just her members, and who I'm proud to say is a friend. And now on to today's agenda. We'll be voting on the appointment of Ken Seth Armstead as a painter member and Deborah Martin as a lay member of the New York City Art Commission known as the Public Design Commission. Out of the Finance Committee, we'll be voting on a transparency resolution and a pre-considered resolution setting the date and time of a public hearing to consider a local law that would authorize assessment increases requested by two business improvement districts. Moving on to our legislative agenda, we'll be voting on the following bills. The first three are related to housing. Now more than ever, access to stable housing is critical. It's always critical, but especially now. Any barriers to attaining permanent affordable housing are unacceptable. And the first two bills are related specifically to applicants of the city's city FEPS program. Introduction 2080A, sponsored by our general welfare chair, Steve Levin, will require the Department of Social Services to provide applicants to their rental assistance city FEPS with online status updates. Introduction 1339A, sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala, will require the Department of Social Services to provide written notice to City FEPS rental assistance program applicants with information about source of income discrimination at the time an applicant receives a shopping letter from DSS. And from the staff, I wanna thank Aminta Kilowan for her work on those bills. Source of income discrimination or discrimination based on your source of income including rental assistance vouchers, remains a barrier to too many New Yorkers seeking housing. Introduction 2082A, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, will align the city's human rights law with recently enacted state law source of income discrimination provisions. 
currently prohibitions against discrimination in housing accommodations based on lawful source of income currently do not apply to housing, accom housing accommodations comprised of five or fewer units. This bill would repeal that exception. It would also expand the definition of lawful source of income to include all other types of lawful income that low-income New Yorkers may have access to, such as child support, alimony, and other types of housing assistance. And I want to thank Balkis Mirig for her work on that bill. Superstorm Sandy underscored the dangers of extreme weather and the serious risks this city is facing because of climate change. This is why I am proud of the work the council has done to lead the, in the fight against climate change. In 2019, we passed the groundbreaking Climate Mobilization Act, which is paving the way toward a serious reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from buildings. Today, we are strengthening that legislation. The time is now to take aggressive action to mitigate climate change, not tomorrow. Introduction number 1947A, sponsored by our, sponsored by our Environmental Protection Chair, Costa Constantinides, will amend the definition of rent regulated accommodations for purposes of compliance with Local Law 97 of 2019. Under this law, buildings in which rent regulated units make up less than 35% of the total units would be required to comply with Local Law 97's greenhouse gas emission limits. The mandate for buildings in which rent regulated units make up 35% or more of the total units would not be changed. Those buildings are still required to complete a series of low cost prescriptive, prescriptive measures to increase energy efficiency. This bill would also provide a two year extension to newly covered buildings to comply with the first building emissions limits. Next, introduction number 2072A, sponsored by Councilmember Constantinides, will require the City of New York to submit a report to the Mayor and the City Council detailing their outreach and education efforts to provide information about compliance with the greenhouse gas emissions limits pursuant to Local Law 97 of 2019. The city would be required to report on its outreach efforts about incentive program opportunities and other sources of funding available to buildings. This bill would also require building owners to report on the methods that they use to comply with the greenhouse gas emissions limits, which the city would report on to the council and to the mayor. And I wanna thank Nicola Ben for, for her work on these really important but complicated bills and congratulations Costa on this, I know you've worked really hard on it. Uh, that is our agenda for today. I turn it back over to you, Majority Leader Combo. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. If there are no members that have signed up to speak, then we will move into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, Intro 2082, Source of Income in Housing Accommodations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, Intro 1947A, Rent Regulated Accommodations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 2072A, Greenhouse Gas Emissions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Preconsidered Resos 1470 and 1471, Transparency Reso and Business Improvement Districts. Uh, coupled on general orders. Report of the committee on general. Hold on, Mr. Clerk. And Mr. Speaker, for intro 2072A. Amended and that? coupled on general orders for uh, 2072A. Great. Thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. Report of the committee on general welfare, intros 1339A and 2080A, source of income and rental assistance programs. 
amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M253 and Reso 1477, approving the appointment of Kenseth Armstead, Art Commission. Coupled on general orders. M254 and Reso 1478, approving the appointment of Deborah Martin, Art Commission. A couple of general orders, and I am now asking the clerk to take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general order calendar. Adam. I on all. Ampri Samuel. I on all. Thank you. Ayala. I on all. Baron. I vote aye. Borelli. Council member Borelli. I'll come back. Uh, Brannon. I on all. Cabrera. I. Chin. I on all. Cohen. I. Constantinidis. Current majority leader may be allowed to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank I'm you sorry. so much. Um, thank you, first speaker Johnson, for your great climate leadership. Uh, you've been a true champion of the environment uh, for our city and the country. And um, before we vote today, I want to second um, your recognition of the giant loss of Cecil Corbin Mark when he passed away unexpectedly. Uh, he was the heart and soul of We Act for Environmental Justice. He dedicated the last 26 years of his life to fighting racism in all forms whether it was economic injustices that prevented black and brown New Yorkers from accessing good jobs or the environmental policies that polluted communities of color. Whenever I worked on EJ legislation, my first call would be to Cecil and it, it felt almost strange. Not, I went to go pick up the phone to call him about 1947 and you know, it's just, it's just heartbreaking and we miss him. Um, he worked so hard on Local Law 97, so I wanna dedicate my vote today to my friend uh, Cecil Corbin Mark. Uh, briefly, 1947 brings in buildings which less than 35% of the units are rent regulated into Local Law 97, which was the centerpiece of the uh, Climate Mobilization Act. Local Law 97 mandated steep but accessible emissions cuts from New York City's largest polluters. The 55,000 buildings that emit 30% of our greenhouse gases every year. Bills, buildings impacted by intro 1947 were previously given a rigid prescriptive paths, but did not have to have a, a strict emissions limit. Today, we're bringing these in line with the new rent laws that Albany has set forth. Uh, so, you know, we knew that this was going to happen and it's going to create good jobs. Urban Green Council has talked about in Oklahoma 97, creating 141,000 jobs over the next 10 years sustainable job, jobs that will make sure that we have a just transition. We'll also guarantee that tenants live in cleaner, more energy efficient buildings and their landlords will save money on those efficiencies in the long run. Um, so I am proud today and I hope my colleagues uh, will vote in favor of both 2072 and local law and, and intro 1947. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Constantinides, how do you vote? I vote aye on all. And with thanks to all the staff, uh, and I've named during the, the pre-stated, but I don't want to take up more time, but all the staff that worked on this bill, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Borelli? Uh, I vote aye on all except 1947 and intro 2082. Thank you. And sorry uh, for my technical issue. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. With all due respect <clears throat> to Costa and the great work that he's done as a climate change champion, um, I just want to point out, while I will be voting yes on all today, I just want to make sure that I'm clear that times have changed because of COVID and added costs 
uh, lead to higher rents to all tenants, including low-income tenants. The Rent Guidelines Board estimates that the cost of operating a regulated apartment is more than $1,000. Before a small property owner pays their mortgage or is able to invest in these improvements in a building, so we need to be aware of that cost. Added mandates and costs don't hurt the big landlords, but it cripples the smaller ones and forces them in some instances to sell to bigger ones. The hardship provision is not realistic help for small landlords because they will be forced to sell before they can even reach that point. Many of these small landlords, I must point out, are people of color uh, who really struggle to maintain their properties, who've been there in tough times. Um, so I will be voting yes on all, but I wanna make sure that I put on this body's um, uh, uh, desk the idea that while we are fighting for climate change, we don't wanna disenfranchise small homeowners in the process. Thank you, Costa, for this legislation. Thank you for your thoughtful process in climate change. Um, but we also must not let good be the enemy of great. And while this is good legislation, we have to bear in mind that small landlords suffer tremendously, not only through the pandemic, but um, when, when these changes are put in place. Uh, thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilman Thanks. McCarthy. Deutsch. Uh, I on 2080, and I want to thank Robert Carnegie for those words and uh, no one the rest. <coughs> Diaz. D and Go. Drum. Aye. Uh. Eugene. I vote aye. Thank you. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Time Thank starts you. now. Thanks, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues, and I'll be brief. Councilmember Corning, he stole some of my remarks. Um, but I am voting aye on all of today's agenda items, but certainly wanted to also add my voice to that of Council Member Carnegie and recognizing many of our small owners who have been struggling uh, and are at a particular disadvantage after this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, reminding all of us in the work we do, there are sometimes unintended consequences and not lumping all of our small owners with some of the larger owners. Uh, while many have struggled, um, I think when you look at many of our small owners, many of whom are men and women of color, we have to be mindful of some of the uniqueness that they bring to the table, the services that are provided, the value they bring, but also the hardships that they face. So I appreciate all of the work and the leadership Thank you, Councilmember Constantinides, for your incredible work. Uh, very supportive of this bill. I uh, always want to recognize some of our smaller uh, guys and girls that don't always get recognized. So with that, congratulations to all of our colleagues, Councilmember Levin, on your bill, Councilmember Ayala, uh, and all of my colleagues for uh, today's important agenda. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Joan I. Councilmember Jonai, you're on mute. Let's come back to Councilmember Jonai. Okay. Gorenchik. Aye. Holden. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1947A and 2082, of which I vote no. Kalos. Uh, aye on all. Ku. Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank Time you. Time starts now. Thank you very much, uh, Majority Leader. Um, I want to give real praise to Councilmember Constantinides and especially to associate myself uh, with his remarks about Cecil Corbin Mark, who we just so, it's such a devastating loss. But um, knowing that we're carrying on his legacy here is, is powerful. I just want to um, uh, say first the way that this was handled 
uh, to be thoughtful about making sure we don't harm rent regulated tenants by uh, making sure that they were exempted from the original local law, working with legislators in Albany to strengthen tenant protection so that it would be possible to do this bill in a way that, that did protect them and then coming back and passing it here, I think makes enormous sense. The vast majority of the requirements here actually are going to save owners money. Uh, so in fact, what they're gonna do is invest in buildings in a way that reduce their energy bill over time. Uh, and I think in some ways it's a metaphor for the kind of recovery that we're going to need from the COVID crisis. If we can come out of the COVID crisis with our eye on getting our city ready for the climate crisis, mitigating fossil fuels and building a more resilient city, then we can involve everyone in building that city together. This legislation will not only protect tenants and not only I believe is affordable for owners, but it will create good jobs and with good workforce development, we can make sure we're building that more sustainable and resilient city in the days ahead. Congratulations also to council members, Levin, Ayala, uh, and powers on your good source of income discrimination uh, legislation. Uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilmember Lander. Levin. Um, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Arm starts now. Thank you. In the midst, uh, uh, first off, I vote aye on all because I realize I have 1% on my iPad here. So I vote aye on all. Uh, I, I do want to say, in the midst of a global pandemic, and pandemic, our city continues to grapple with the housing crisis. Almost 80,000 New Yorkers are homeless or unstably housed, and thousands more face potential of eviction when the state's moratorium is lifted. Access to affordable housing and homelessness prevention need to be at the core of our city's focus right now. With that in mind, I am pleased that the council is voting on intros 1339 and 2080A today. These bills will help improve the process of obtaining rental assistance and ensure that the clients, clients know their rights. Rental assistance vouchers are the primary tools that we have in the city to ensure that people are able to move out of shelter and into housing. Vouchers can also assist New Yorkers at risk of losing their housing to avoid eviction and entry into shelter. However, the confusing bureaucracy of securing government benefits, as well as voucher holders not knowing their rights when landlords illegally deny them housing based on their source of income are barriers to securing housing. Um, so I'm very uh, excited that these bills are passing today. Um, I hope that uh, that these bills will bring us closer to passing intro 146, which um, around 40 of you are, are co-sponsors of, which would raise the voucher levels to the fair market rent set as set by the HUD standard so that individuals and families are able to quickly exit the shelter system into housing and avoid entering the shelter system altogether. Um, I want to thank all the advocates and the public, um, as well as uh, congratulate uh, Member Ayala and uh, Councilor Constantine News on the legislation today. Thank you, and I vote on all. Thank you. Thank you. For the record, Steve Levin is the goat. <laughs> he's he's the goat, Albert. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Council Member Levine. I want to associate myself with Albert's comments. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. We'll be voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis. I vote aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time Thank starts you. now. Thank you. Hello, colleagues. Uh, I am here to say thank you uh, to prime sponsors, Steve Levin and Diana Ayala, Keith Powers, uh, for their housing bills they're putting forward today. And uh, these bill numbers are 2082A, 1339A, 1339, uh, 1339A. And what I want to just do is lift up the words that uh, were spoken in the uh, press conference earlier today. Uh, Councilmember Ayala spoke to her own experience about these vouchers. And I just want to say thank you. It was, it was moving to kind of hear directly from you about that experience and how important this is for families today. Um, these bills, I believe, will help homeless uh, here in New York uh, and for people to find a pathway to permanent housing for too long, even after obtaining a city and state and federal housing vouchers, homeless New Yorkers face so much discrimination. Intro 2082 in particular will give New Yorkers the ability to find housing in the district they came from where they lived. Those vouchers are meaningless unless there's a way to enforce their use across the city. 
I hope this change in the law gives people the ability to find permanent housing. And for this moment, at least gives hope that the city council is really listening to them. Uh, we have members who are uh, in that experience, really ensuring that we do the right thing. And I'm just so proud to say yes to that. And in the last few seconds, I just wanna associate my words with Brad Lander um, and Costa Constantinides for, for really kind of pushing um, the urgency to those bills um, that are gonna really help us combat climate change and, and really against some of the sentiment that, that we have to slow down because of COVID. In fact, we have to speed up. COVID is just a small fraction of the pain that we're gonna feel as a city, as a country, as a world. And now is the time to leap forward. Uh, and I'm so, so excited that that uh, is really captured in these two bills and I can't wait to do more on that. I vote aye on all, thank you. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank I'm you. Sorry. No. <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I just want to add my voice and, and, and sentiments um, and condolences on the past and transition of Cecil Mark. He was an, a very important and integral voice in communities of color in the fight of uh, against environmental justice and uh, for all four environmental justice and environmental justice inequities that that uh, that he's really. Uh, brought that to life for, for many of us and, and led that struggle. So um, his voice will be missed and, and hopefully we can continue to carry on that work. Um, and then secondly, uh, as we talk about our, the passing of our dedicated uh, public servants, I wanna add the name of uh, Franklin Delano Williams, retired firefighter who happens to be my father-in-law who we laid to rest yesterday, who in 1967 became a firefighter uh, the only person of color and certainly only African American in that class. And he spent uh, more than 25 years serving Brooklyn's uh, 211 as a member, also as a member of the Vulcan Society, of which he would have been very proud of the young men and women that was his honor guard as he was laid to rest as he has fought as many of us to make sure that we have diversity and equity within the fire department. Uh, that being said, that is a good segue into what we talk about pay equity. We remain, uh, we have two bills that uh, we hope to be uh, voted on, which are um, retention and attrition data around the fire department, as well as certainly pay equity uh, for EMS. We look forward to working with this council to make sure that we have this equity that really honors the dedicated public servants in the way that they deserve. So thank you. Which I vote I on all. Thank you. Moya. I vote I on all. Perkins. I on all. Thank you. Powers. Permission to explain my vote quickly. Permission granted. I'm sorry. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to the speaker. Thank you to Councilmember Chair Levin and uh, here at the council for our bill we're passing today. Of course, income discrimination would only bring us in line. With, would only uh, bring us in line with the state law, but also give us enforcement action here at the city to prevent folks from being discriminated based on having a housing voucher or other source of income. Um, it's one of the barriers that we're seeing for folks coming out of the homeless shelter system and find permanent housing is the process of trying to find an apartment, particularly having a uh, housing voucher or another uh, form of income that uh, landlords may not want to take. So it's one way to help, help make sure people can get, get out of the shelter system and get into permanent housing. So thank you to everybody for your work on it, to my staff for uh, their work to help get this bill into final form. And I'm really proud we're, we're taking a step today to make uh, New Yorkers' lives easier when it comes to finding an apartment here in New York City. Because as we say all the time, housing really is a human right. And being able to get into a good apartment, a good housing here in the city is essential for so many New Yorkers. So thank you to everybody. And I proudly vote on it. Reynoso. I vote I don't know. Congratulations to Councilmember Constantinides. Richards. 
I don't know. Rivera. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye, I know. Salamanca. Council member Salamanca. We'll come back. Torres. I vote aye. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of 1947 and 2082. I vote no on those two, but aye on all others. Thank you. Thank you. Valone. I am all with the exception of 1947, which I am in. Thank you. Van Bramer. I am all. Jaeger. May I be excused to explain my vote, please, Madam President? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with. Uh, Almost all the bills that are being passed today, uh, I had some concerns um, about uh, intro 1947 um, uh, with respect to the, uh, the the size of the percentage that is being changed to. But with the extension of time uh, for several years for buildings to become compliant, uh, in the long run, I hope that this makes sense uh, in the you know in the ability of business of buildings to to uh, uh, regulate themselves and and uh, be more caring to the environment. Uh, in the short term, hopefully, it doesn't become necessary to revisit the question of when that deadline needs to be. And so, for that, I will vote aye. Although I did have reservations uh, when we had the hearings in the committee. Um, with respect to Intro 2082, uh, most of the bill to me is not only fine, but it's something we should uh, we should be achieving um, in many ways. It is a it is uh, an outrage, I think, that there's an ability for a landlord to say that uh, child support, uh, alimony, um, uh, social security income, et cetera, is not lawful income for purposes of uh, suit deciding whether or not your tenant can actually afford to rent the apartment. However, I have a concern about section two of the bill uh, of 2082, which would remove the exemption for the smallest homeowners, the two, three, four, five family homes, and only, only as it relates to the vouchers. And that's because I don't think it's proper for us to force a two or three family homeowner into a voucher program, a highly uh, uh, difficult bureaucracy for people, for the regular common uh, business owner to navigate, let alone a small homeowner. And so for that reason, and that reason alone, uh, although I do agree with the principal idea behind the bill, I abstain on intro 2082, I also abstain on resolution 1471. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so much. Madam Majority Leader, may I vote please? Yes. I on all, thank you. Uh, okay, um, Council Member Joe and I, Let's see if he's back. He is not. Uh, Matteo. Uh, no on 2082, no on 1947, I the rest. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. One moment.
just give us a moment as we are waiting for the tally. Okay, thank you. So uh, all items in today's general order calendar have a vote of 46 in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions. With the exceptions, intro, introduction 2080 has a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 1947A has 41 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2082A has 41 in the affirmative, five in the negative, one abstention. And resolution 1471 has 45 in the affirmative, one in the negative and one abstention. Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the cl countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Lewis, Kalos, and Vallone. Okay, we will start with Council Member Lewis and just wait for the time clock to begin. Time starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. New York City, the largest and wealthiest city in the country, should be more than capable of providing all students, regardless of race, income, or abilities, with a high quality education and the fundamental skills to excel in their studies. However, the COVID-19 pandemic exposed the present day challenges that black and brown students must overcome regularly, attending classes and to submit coursework. Without computers or affordable internet access, the achievement gap will only worsen in devastated communities. Seven months later, thousands of families are disconnected, disengaged, or are still struggling to adapt to remote learning. We are nearly halfway through the school year, yet 77,000 students still lack internet equipped iPads necessary for remote learning. These disparities disproportionately affect black and brown communities and will only perpetuate the racial barriers that they must overcome throughout their lifetime. I am proud to co-sponsor legislation with council members Kalos and Traeger to close the digital divide and expand educational equity in New York City through the use of modern technology while also providing families with the necessary support to ensure that their children get the educational experience they deserve. I am introducing three pieces of legislation. Resol 1473, a resolution calling on the city of the Department of Education to provide families of children with disabilities with the necessary training and equipment to properly enable distance learning. Resol 1474, a resol calling upon the Department of Education to station a distance learning specialist in each school district to provide critical and local assistance with issues related to distance learning and intro 2138 that I'm co-priming with uh, Council Member Kalos, a local law to provide every public school student with internet ready laptop computers. While we focus on bridging the digital divide, we mustn't forget about the with children with disabilities who have had to cope with greater difficulties in providing their children with the necessary support they need to pro properly learn remotely. Thank you, Speaker Johnson and Majority Leader Cumbo for the opportunity to discuss these bills today. And I urge my colleagues to sign on to the, these three pieces of legislation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Lewis. We'll now hear from Council Member Kalos, followed by Valone. Time starts now. Council Member Farrah Lewis said it quite eloquently and I'll do my best to follow and emphasize the importance of introduction 2138 and ask for your sponsorship. Thanks to leadership from education chair, Mark Traeger, uh, we recently learned the bombshell news that the Department of Education uh, that more than 77,000 public school students uh, who have to learn remotely still don't have laptops with internet, many of whom are low income students of color. General Welfare, Stephen, General Welfare Chair Stephen Levin uncovered public school students living in shelters and temporary housing with iPads with 4G 
that didn't actually work indoors. All of this is despite repeated assurances from Mayor de Blasio that every student who needs one was gonna get one. Working with both committee chairs and co-prime sponsor council member Farrah Lewis, we are submitting introduction to 2138 to guarantee every single one of New York City's 1.1 million public school students an internet connected laptop loaded with culturally responsive open source textbooks. This legislation at the pre-introduction support of public advocate Jamani Williams as well, borough presidents Gail Brewer and Eric Adams, and I hope you will sign on too. As we seek to recover from the pandemic, we can't go back to a new normal that never worked for any of us. We need a worker-led recovery. That's why I authored introduction 2137 that would raise wages for 200,000 nonprofit human service workers who have been on our front lines since before the pandemic, taking care of our youth, seniors, homeless, and hungry. Human service workers are 82% women, 80% of whom are of color, and the city has contracts that continue to pay them poverty wages. City contracts pay private sector vendors above market rates and continue to pay our nonprofit providers pennies on the dollar. This legislation co-sponsored by former contracts chair and current women and gender equity chair, Helen Rosenthal, so as a standard, but both fought to raise these wages. Add your name to pass this into law, set a prevailing wage for human service workers to raise wages and require the city to fully fund nonprofit workers as we fight to end wage disparities for women and women of color. Thank you. Hard to cut someone off when they're talking about ending wage disparity for women of color. I'll now go on to Council Member Vallone. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Time starts now. Last week, uh, as we closed the meeting, I just told everyone about the personal situation there happening in Armenia that's now affecting the world. So I'm happy to say that today uh, we are introducing Reso 1476, which I'm very excited about and passionate about. I'll just give you a quick little summary of what it's about. So today, uh, we submitted 1476 to speak on the atrocities, once again, that is being per perpetuated on the Armenian people and express my deep concern with the ongoing conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan in Nagorno-Karabakh. Once again, Armenia, the homeland of my wife and our family, finds itself under attack and fighting for their survival. It's my hope that an immediate peaceful resolution can be reached to the heartbreaking violence, destruction, and loss of life currently impacting the region of Artsakh. For this reason, I've introduced today's resolution 1476, urging Congress and the President of the United States to work towards a lasting ceasefire and a simple peaceful resolution for Armenia and Azerbaijan. Nearly 10,000 Armenian Americans call our city home. The US must stand up to aggression and let the Armenian people know they are not alone. And while we advocate for peace in the region, I'm very proud today to speak on behalf of our city council chamber and remember it's hashtag peace for Armenians uh, and this would be a wonderful statement so far only the council of Los Angeles has stepped up and I know our council can can do better than our comrades in Los Angeles so um, that is today's resolution and I thank you for the time Madam Majority Leader and may everyone have a happy healthy and safe Halloween this weekend because I know some of the little ones still want to do something so we have to be creative. With that, I'm finished, thank you. Thank you, and we always appreciate how you utilize your personal challenges to impact the lives of many. So thank you so much in our prayers to your family. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Barron and Rivera. Council Member Barron, you may begin. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to echo the sentiments expressed by our colleague, Farrell Lewis, regarding the situation that we're facing in terms of educating our children. And for me, as you often know, you've heard me say, it doesn't stop at 12th grade. I think we've got to look beyond that to post-secondary school education and see what needs to be co corrected there as well. And I just wanted to use this opportunity to extend my sincere condolences to Councilmember Miller, his wife, Pia, and their family on the loss of their loved one. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Barron. And we will have now Councilmember Rivera. Time starts now. 
Thank you so much, uh, Majority Leader. I want to take this time to highlight a bill that I am proud to introduce today. Intro 2141 will amend the Administrative Code and Charter of New York City to remove any and all usage of the antiquated, antiquated term rent, mental retardation and replace it with intellectual and developmental disability. It is well past time that this change is made. In my conversations with disability and anti-bullying advocates, it has been made abundantly clear that the outdated term mental retardation serves only to perpetuate the use of this word and myriad other hateful language and behavior against people with disabilities. This change will primarily affect the laws and rules of the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, Administration for Children's Services, and the Human Resources Administration. As New Yorkers, we pride ourselves on setting the curve for other cities nationwide. However, on this issue, we have fallen woefully behind. I introduced this legislation today fueled by the belief that we can all do better and the, and the knowledge that what is better for New York City has to begin with us as municipal leaders. The city's continued use of mental retardation in law sends a message that derogatory language such as this R slur is socially acceptable. It is not, and it hasn't been for quite some time now. By replacing this term with intellectual and developmental disability, we guarantee that the city is equipped to provide inclusive, compassionate, person-first services to the New Yorkers that need them. I urge you to join me and our supporters in this campaign, including the Center for Independence of the Disabled New York, Harlem Independent Living Center, AHRC, and the 504 Democratic Club in co-sponsoring this bill and to support its swift passage. We cannot leave our neighbors behind any longer. We need to embrace a new R word for all in our community, and that's respect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who have signed up to speak? No, Madam Majority Leader. Seeing none, I'll now have Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. As always, you did a great job. You always do. The stated meeting of October 29th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Everyone stay safe.